You're welcome to Introductory Chemistry, FSC 112, Organic Section. In this section, we're going to be looking at hydrocarbons, starting with alkanes. Alkanes are hydrocarbons. By hydrocarbons, we talk about compound that contains hydrogen and carbons. That's why they're called hydrocarbons. They have general formula CnH2n plus 2, where n is the number of carbon. The alkanes are saturated organic compounds. So, this formula is going to help you to know the family. This family, we call it homologous family or homologous series. And if you look at it, they differ from each other by CH2. So the first one is when N is 1, we call it methane. When N is 2, we call it ethane. And others as shown. From C4, we start having what we call isomers. From this slide you can see what we talk about different ways that this compound can be represented we can have it as straight chain or we can have it as branch chain we call it projection it can also be put in partially condensed form and it can also be represented with stick formula so these are way we can re represent this compound called alkanes so the first one, if you're talking about structural formula, the exact structural formula is the projection method. But partially condensed, you can use it for your chemical reaction. The stick formula can also be used for any. But if you're not comfortable, you don't understand stick formula, please stick on the ones you are familiar with. So you don't end up failing yourself because you want to use the one that looks easy, which is stick formula. Like I said, the isomer starts from carbon number four. We call it butane. So this butane can also have another branch, which is called 2-methylpropane, so called isobutane. If you look at butane and 2-methylpropane, which is isobutane, you realize that the boiling point of normal butane is zero degrees. And when it's branched, it becomes minus because branching lowers melting point and also boiling point. When things are co compressed together, on themselves, by being compressed, they're generating heat. So that's why boiling point and melting point are lower than that of stretching. This is M pentane. Because normal butane is going to have two isomers, which is normal butane and isobutane. In pentane, we have three isomers. We have normal pentane, isopentane, and neopentane. Isopentane is two methyl butane, while neopentane is two two dimethyl propane. So these are the isomers of this compound it means that the more the number of carbon from four, the more the isomers. These, these are the family, we call it homologous series of alkane. We have methane, ethane, and propane. They only have one isomer, which is their normal straight chain. But when it comes to butane, the isomers be Starts. So butane is going to have two, pentane three, hexane five, and others as shown. In classification of halides, a key halides, respect to primary, secondary, and tertiary, this is still the same method of classifying alcohol into primary, secondary, and tertiary. Primary a key halide. The carbon that bears the halide is going to have two hydrogen. Secondary, 
the carbon that bear the halide is going to have one hydrogen. Tertiary, the carbon that bear the halide will have no hydrogen. So that's the same thing with amide, the same thing with anything that has primary, secondary, and tertiary. The physical properties of our canes. Because our cane contains just carbon and hydrogen, they are known as non-polar or weakly polar. And they cannot form hydrogen bonding because there is no uh, electronegative atom. Hence, they exhibit relatively weak intermolecular forces. They have low melting point and boiling point. And this increases with size and decreases with branching. Meaning that the melting point of propane is higher than that of methane. And when I start having branching, the straight chain will have higher boiling point and melting point compared with the branch chain. So branching decreases the melting point and boiling point. So the more branching, the lower the melting and boiling point. So this is a table where the boiling point and melting point are represented. If you look at them, you understand that the more the carbon the higher the boiling point and melting point that's why we have n hexane is having 95 of melting point why the boiling point of n hexane is 59 so the melting point is increasing with increase in number of carbon chain the same thing with boiling point but if you look at the branching, realize branching lowers melting and boiling point, like said in the previous slide. The sources of this alkane are natural gas, petroleum, and coal. Petroleum is a complex mixture of hydrocarbons. This is used, which are used as solvents, as your fuels, as raw materials for chemical synthesis. And this natural gas or petroleum are separated by fractional distillation in a refinery when you talk about fractional distillation it means heating them with respect to their difference in boiling point each component is going to be eluted when its boiling point is approached so with that you are going to fractionally separate them by distillation fossil fuel which is a crude oil contains so many components we have petroleum we have asphalt we have broiler oil we have a lubricant we have others which are lubricant waxes and solvents and others this petroleum like I said is a complex of mixtures of organic compounds and most of them contain one to 40 carbons so by distillation they will be separated are the fractions of a fossil fuel. If you look at the diagram, you can realize that this is what happens in the refinery. By virtue of their boiling points, we have boiling point range. Below 20 is gases. Between 20 and 200 is gasoline. And others as shown on the diagram. So this also is talking about the temperature range and the carbon equivalent of these fractions of crude oil. How can we synthesize alkane in the lab? And remember, these alkanes can be synthesized in industry. Industry is a place where we want to get this in large quantity. Lab is a place where we get them in small quantity. The essence of industry is to minimize cost to optimize profit. Why in the laboratory, our target is not for profit. Our target is to investigate and validate that this is possible. Industry will look for a means of optimizing for profit purpose. In the lab, the compound obtained in the lab is virtually very pure compared with that obtained in the industry. In the, in the lab, there are flexible apparatus. You can always improvise. In the industries, we have dedicated apparatus for each synthesis that you want to carry out. 
so method of synthesizing alkane in the lab is by reduction of a key halide. This reduction can be achieved either by hydrolysis of greener reagents or reaction of active metal with an acid, as we can see, as we are going to see in subsequent slides. In reduction of a key halide using hydrolysis of greener reagents, first is formation of greener reagents by by reacting a key halide with magnesium metal. So this greener reagent formed is going to be hydrolyzed. Under hydrolysis, is going to form alkene. Secondly, is the reaction of a key halide with metal and acid. Example is that I have secondary butyl chloride. Using metal like tin or zinc in HCl, I'll form alkene. That in this case, I'll form my ethane. Reactions of alkane. If you look at this slide, you realize that alkanes are virtually not reactive. It cannot react with sulfuric acid, cannot react with sodium hydroxide, cannot react with sodium metal, it cannot undergo oxidation with permanganate, it cannot react with, it cannot be hydrogenated, it cannot react with bromine water, or it cannot be hydrolyzed. Oxidizing reducing agents or even halogens. Why? Because they are saturated. Because they are saturated, they are not reactive. So the only reaction that this compound can undergo are combustion, substitution reaction, and pyrolysis, which we are going to see in subsequent slides. Halogenation is a substitution reaction. Why combustion is an oxidation reaction? But this combustion is what happens naturally with oxygen in the air. Why pyrolysis is also known as cracking. In halogenation, this alkane is going to react with heat or UV light to form a key halide. And remember, reduction of this key halide is going to form alkane. So what happens is that this the hydrogen in alkane is going to be replaced with halide. That's why it is called substitution reaction. So in this halogenation reaction, bromine is more reactive, followed by chlorine. Tertiary alkane is more reactive, followed by secondary and primary. Then the list of the reactive is normal methane. Now if you want to know a tertiary one, in tertiary compound is the one that there is no hydrogen. Like if I have 2,2-dimethyl propane, it is tertiary. So it is more reactive than secondary, than primary. In this reaction, we can see this is the primary alkane. Under reaction is going to form primary alkyl halide and secondary alkyl halide. And in this case, Secondary has higher percentage. It means that secondary is going to be more feasible in the reaction than primary. But when I have secondary, I'm going to form secondary key halide and tertiary. In that case, secondary is much more feasible, having 64%. In combustion reaction, we're talking about alkane reacting with oxygen to form CO2 and water and this happens in the midst of heat in pyrolysis which is cracking we talk about larger alkane under high temperature forming smaller alkane alkane and hydrogen so these are the three major reactions that alkane undergoes cycloalkanes are alkanes that are in a ring form so we can have the list is cyclopropane and cyclobutane. If you look at their melting points, the more the ring, the higher the melting point and the higher the boiling point. Just like we saw in aliphatic alkane. We can observe that the more the number of carbon in the ring, the higher the boiling point and melting point. 
Drawing and naming of cycloalkanes. Cycloalkanes are simply represented as polygons, which represent the number of carbons that contain in the compound. Cycloalkanes are being named by virtue of the polygon, which the number of carbon they contain represents. Come to the end of this class. So in summary is that alkanes are saturated organic compounds. Because they are saturated, they are not reactive. The major reactions are combustion reaction, substitution reaction, which is halogenation, and pyrolysis, which is cracking. This compound contains isomers. Isomers are like twins. So for isomers to start for, from an alkane, it's going to start from carbon number four, which is butane. Carbon number one and three can never have isomer. So isomerism in alkane starts with carbon number four. I wish you success in your FSC 112 exams. In the next class, we're going to look at alkane. Make sure you listen to this video all over again. And if you have questions, be free to ask your question on the comment section. See you in the next class.